Hi folks, Chris Mask from Eastlink Community TV's Off the Chip Wagon. Food sport competitor, do a competitive barbecue with Broken Antler Barbecue out of the Sudbury area. Been to the World Food Championships a couple times. And uh, yeah, just a general foodie who likes to talk food. And that is why the Greater Sudbury Public Library Services has asked me to do these little cooking demos for you. And this was actually something that somebody had asked me about. And uh, it was a rabbit hole to really put this episode together because there's a lot to it here. Boxed pasta. Yeah. Is there really that much of a difference? Oh, yes. Yes, there is. So let's break this down here. Pasta itself is basically something that's created out of any unleavened dough consisting of ground durum wheat, water, or eggs. If you look back during the pandemic on YouTube, you'll actually find a uh, pasta video that I made, uh, Pasta of Puppets, I believe was the name of it, where you can break down making handmade pasta, which isn't as hard as you think. But for convenience purposes, box pasta, you can buy this at corner stores, gas stations, big box stores, grocery stores, and then you can get the artisan stuff from like farmer's markets and things like that. The question though, is there really that much of a difference? And the answer, yeah, yeah, there is. And it's all about the devil being in the detail of the process itself. So by definition, pasta is essentially, when you translate it, paste. But it's getting that dough, the right flour, the right consistency. When you look at macaroni, it's kneading dough with energy. But that's the same dough that you get with pasta, so that's kind of like splitting hairs. It really comes down to shape at that point. When you take a look at pasta and how it's a staple meal, we're looking at, on average, every household at least once a week having some type of pasta dish. And the convenience of going to the store and buying a box of it or a little bag of it, you can't deny that. And while it only does take really a few minutes to whip up pasta fresh, at the end of the day, box pasta, huge corner of the grocery market out there, okay? Fresh pasta, we call that pasta fresca. The box stuff, pasta secca. So pasta in a box is pasta secca. But where does pasta come from? And here's where we're looking way back into history, okay? Because Asia, Africa, the Middle East, and naturally Italy all have records indicating that pasta was part of their diet in some capacity and part of their food culture for over 3,500 years. But China technically, when you look back at the Shang Dynasty in 1700 to 1100 BC, I believe it was, uh, they're the ones that uh, have the first pasta-style creation in terms of a recipe on record. And the ancient Greeks, they've got it recorded as well. In Africa, their version of pasta was made with uh, camet crop. But the Italians really kind of took over the whole pasta thing in about 4th century BC. And uh, that's where it really became, you know, their cultural food item. Pasta. Okay. So, sorry Marco Polo, unlike what your book says, you probably were not the one that introduced pasta to Europe and the rest of the world here. Uh, there were a lot of places making pasta well before you ever touched down on any of that soil. The Italians, though, this is where they really, really cement their claim. Because in an archaeological dig site, they found tools that were used to make pasta. And those tools, over the centuries haven't had to evolve because they had it right back then in 4th century BC, so much so that today's kitchen tools for making pasta, the design is pretty much the same, okay? The Italians really ran with the pasta whole coal concept thing here during the Renaissance and by the 14th century, that's where they refined it to a cultural staple food with commercialization, where you could buy dried pasta. The devil, though, is really in the detail because on the surface, it's like, well, is there really much of a difference between commercial pasta versus dried pasta? Yeah, yeah, there is. Because much like how you can't call something champagne unless those grapes come from the Champagne region of France, Italian pasta, pasta fresca or pasta secca, it comes down to the dye that is used to extrude the pasta. So not dye like a coloring, we're talking about that little metal wheel and that pushes the pasta through it here. So commercial sold pasta will use a Teflon extruder dye. 
and that dye will help create a rougher surface. Couple that with low temperature drying and you get a really deep flavor with a long shelf life. But that rougher surface on the commercial pasta from that Teflon extruder dye, that's what creates the little ridges that help sauce stick better to box pasta versus the artisan pasta, which uses a bronze dye and has a lot smoother texture. So you need to kind of know what you're working with when you're making pasta. And maybe that might explain for some of you why uh, when you do make fresh pasta at home, you might have a bit of a time, you know, getting that marinara sauce or that bolognese to stick a little bit more. The devil really is in the detail here. Uh, commercial pasta, much about the flour choice as it is the drying process as well. Like I said, there's about 600 varieties of pasta on record around the world. And it is one of the most affordable foods out there. Households average once a week having some kind of pasta dinner. Break it down further, the Italians, this pie's on here, uh, about 60 pounds of pasta a year. That is on average what you will consume here in North America. It's about half that at about 26 pounds per year, which is eaten. Thomas Jefferson, we're going into American history here. Big pasta lover. In fact, he would have crates of pasta shipped over to the U.S. And historians have on record his very own personal macaroni and cheese recipe in his own handwriting, which has been archived. The Industrial Revolution, that really solidified the ability to, you know, go to a store and buy stocked, ready-to-boil pasta out there. Pasta even has its own history museum in this world. It's just, you know, some controversy as to if the, the noodles violate certain dietary laws like with um, the Jewish culture. But I mean, you can use matzah in terms of flour and make a very kosher Passover meal involving pasta and adhere to your dietary restrictions there. The Greeks, when they make their pasta, they basically called it uh, iteria, if I'm not mistaken, I-T-R-I-Y-A-H, I think, if you want to use that for a Scrabble word score. Uh, Arabic, it's uh, lakasha, I believe. So this is kind of a quirky story that I stumbled upon. In 12th century, uh, there was an Arab geographer that was commissioned by Norman King of Sicily to write a travel guide for Italy to be distributed. And essentially, uh, pasta was very well documented in this. And ironically, the Middle East writer here who was putting this together actually used the Greek word of etira, uh, which was shortened to tria. And that term, tria, is actually still used today for a pasta involving chickpeas. So it's almost like a pasta and beans or a pasta fagioli style soup where the broth itself acts as the sauce. That is a staple in Sicilian street culture, I'm telling you. So unless you actually get that stamp of approval from the Italian government, again, like the grapes from the Champagne region of France, you cannot just willy-nilly call something Italian pasta. So the question to me was, do I find there's a difference between fresh versus box pasta? And the easy service answer is, yeah, texturally it is. You can tell, you can see it color-wise in most things. But at the end of the day, I do enjoy both of them, and I will enjoy using boxed or bagged pasta. Comes in different shapes as well. So we talked about how macaroni, right? So that's where you get things like these shells. So we're going to make a couple things with shells today. You can get them in sheets. So now, is this a pasta or is this a macaroni based in the structure? I'll let you guys split the hairs on that one. And generally, you're going to find things like spaghetti like this, right? Whether it's fettuccine, something a little bit thicker, spaghettini smaller, regardless of what it is. This, again, staple in many, many households. We also have to look culturally as well. So that's where we are going to use a rice noodle and uh, make an Asian style stir fry salad, which the kids are going to love. It's called uh, firecracker pasta. You can serve the salad cold, you can serve it hot. It's uh, kind of a cool little recipe. 
with these shells here, we are going to make some stuffed shells, which we're going to turn to the air fryer for. And we'll call it like two and a half recipes here because I don't actually have any cannelloni or manicotti shells, but I am going to use these little shells here to make you a Texas style shotgun shell, which uh, if you are into the barbecue world, definitely, definitely try this. If you have a smoker, they are fantastic. But uh, this will be an air fryer recipe. One will be a smoker recipe and the other one, well, you'll see it. Uh, it's going to be a fun little episode. So let's get started. Recipe number one. It looks really complex on paper, but it's not. It's not. Particularly, just do the pre-prep beforehand. Because the pre-prep for this, uh, there's a lot of veggies to cut. It depends how nice you want to make it look. It's basically a noodle salad, which can be served cold or warm. But this is a recipe that uh, you can actually find in uh, Lynn Crawford's repertoire, because she's the one that created it. Uh, if you have her Earth and Home Cookbook, it's page 35, Addie's Firecracker Noodles. And this, I mean, kids go bananas for it, because essentially once you add all the toppings and then the dressing, it's like a bowl of Rice Krispies, because you're going to get this snap, crackle, and pop, which is where the whole firecracker concept comes from. So this is very much an homage to Lynn's original recipe. Because the thing is, is that once you figure out how to make this as a base, I mean, the world's your oyster, you don't have to just use meat protein for this today. We're actually going to use some ground turkey for this. Um, you can turn to chicken, you could use beef, pork naturally, or you can go for the whole vegetarian route, whether you want to use something like uh, tofu, jackfruit would work for this as well. It's the protein of your choice, whatever it happens to be. We just have to saute it. That's not that difficult. We'll do that in a little bit, okay? The noodle selection for this though, here's where we have to go and find our Asian noodles, and particularly rice noodles, just like this. And if you can break them down into little clusters and clumps about this size, perfect. You're not gonna blanch these, you're going to deep fry them. Yeah, you heard correct. You're going to deep fry them. That's where these noodles get super crispy. And that's where once you add the actual fluid to it, that's where they start to crack, snap, and pop and whatnot. It's a really good texture. And you can make this days in advance because the noodles will keep in a Tupperware container for a very, very, very long time. Just don't, like I said, cook them in water first. We got to use some hot oil, canola oil, will work nicely for that. We're gonna go over to the stove, we're gonna do that. And I'm gonna show you why you wanna use a deep pot for this as well. Um, super crispy, super crunchy, and super healthy as well, because now we get our veggies. So the veggies that we want for this, again, the world is your oyster when it comes to this. You wanna add more veggies for the kids, kids are picky eaters, whatever. But for this, because we wanna have a nice healthy salad, you know, dice up some celery, cucumber adds a nice freshness to this as well. A little mini broccoli florets, fantastic choice. Pepper medley, why not? You know, add some color to it as well. Carrots, big staple in a lot of Asian culture and cuisine. We're going to use red onions because that's what I had in my fridge. Mushrooms, oh yeah. We're going to use fresh mushrooms here. We're going to use pickled mushrooms in another recipe a little bit later on. Just cut up some green onions. And then we got a little bit of Chinese cabbage here to go with it. So all that, plus our protein, goes into our salad, which will be on top of our noodles that we're going to deep fry. But the dressing, here's where we're talking about something that people will be blown away that this is like three, four ingredients. And it's kind of scary because you're using something called fish sauce. So when you're using fish sauce, you know, this is like anchovy based. It's a very deep umami flavor, but we have to kind of cut that with something. And that's why you'll take the fish sauce and end up cutting it with a bit of brown sugar, just like that. And some lime juice. 
And then for our heat, because I mean, as we know, acid, salt, fat, heat, we like that combination. Generally, if you put that together, it's a winning dish. That's where you're going to get yourself some nice chili paste, whatever it is. You want to use sambal, whatever. Sriracha will work, whatever you have handy, really. If you are hesitant about using fish sauce, or you're a vegetarian, vegan, you don't want the anchovies, tamarind sauce works, soy sauce works as well. Watch how simple this is. Essentially, I'm going to do a smaller version because I'm not making for big people. But you take your fresh limes, juice them, real simple. And by juicing your limes, I mean if you've got a juicer, fine. I really like the fresh limes just for the, you know, the flavor versus having to go to the bottled stuff that you can buy. But hey, we're using box pasta to begin with, right? So juice a couple of limes just like this. And then here's where we are going to basically now add our fish sauce. So the fish sauce can be to taste, but it's like building a vinaigrette essentially. So balancing your oil with your acid. So our fish sauce, boom, right in there, just like that. A little bit of brown sugar. And then control your heat with whatever you want. And like I said, when it comes to the chili paste, we'll go with that. Now, once you mix this up, super simple, super easy, and that's pretty much ready to go. Obviously, you can taste it, balance your flavors, but you'll see that you get that freshness from the lime. You're going to get that deep, rich umami coming from the fish sauce. A little bit of extra sweetness from that brown sugar and it finishes with that heat and if you want more heat add more heat you want less heat add less heat you don't want to use the fish sauce again tamarind soy sauce both will work but you saw how long it took me to make that dressing our veggies are all going to be served raw it's just a matter of cooking our protein and our noodles which we're going to get to so our dressing Super easy to make, super simple. You saw that, like four ingredients. It's the meat now. We have to season the meat. So because this is an Asian-inspired dish, we really want to go with the big Asian flavors. And you can use pre-made sauces if you want, but I like to make my own, and it's an excuse to use this lovely mortar and pestle set, which uh, has been part of my kitchen equipment for, whoa, probably two decades. So we are looking at flavors, obviously, that go with an Asian inspired dish. The fish sauce, we've already got that established. So in here, I've got some garlic, I've got some lemongrass, I've got some shallot, and I've got some ginger. And you can add hot peppers to this as well if you really want, because we do have our chili paste over here, just like that. But once you put this all in the mortar and pestle, just start working it, because this, is what we're going to use to flavor our protein and we're using turkey today but I mean you can use just about anything that you have handy whether it's beef or um, you want to use the, the jackfruit whatever once you create your paste like this boom just like that this and this are going to become a very happy little couple together on the stove the other thing you might want to add too, which I should have mentioned, bean sprouts, because everything's better with fresh bean sprouts. So make sure you wash them first. We're going to basically, like I said, do another like recipe and a half because these are almost the same kind of recipe here. These air fryer stuffed shells, delicious. Here's where we're just going to use jumbo pasta shells. Now, the jumbo pasta shells, you can get them in a box. You want to pre-cook these a little bit just so they're al dente. Kind of helps with the, the actual faster cooking process of things. But the little pocket that you create here, this is where we're going to stuff. And normally when you bake these, you're just going to leave them like that and bake them. But what we're going to do is create a little turtle shell kind of situation going here where we're going to encase everything and this becomes quite an interesting little bite. So for this one here with the air fryer, obviously you need an air fryer. We're going to need a box of shells. We're going to need about two cups of filling, whatever kind of filling you want, and roughly 24 ounces of cream cheese if you're doing the full, full on run with this. So I've got some chicken thighs here, which 
I have diced up. These have been marinating with some garlic and some other little spices here. And we're going to continue with the whole Tex-Mex kind of theme. And that's why we're going to go with uh, something that's very similar to almost like a Mexican style seasoning. So here we've got some jalapenos, we've got some tomato, we've got some onion, we've got some garlic, we've got some Mexican oregano. This little mix here is what we're going to put in with our cream cheese. So, bloop, just like that. See? I'm telling you, it's not particularly pretty, but it doesn't take too long to make. So once you get this in here, we're going to mix this up. Now, one thing that you can actually use in this, which works very well, is like a packet of uh, taco seasoning. So if you don't want to go and get your own spice blend, because I mean in here, I've also got a little cumin, I've got some chili powder, got some smoked peppers. Um, the pre-made spice packs, I mean, work really well. But it's all about getting this base with the cream cheese in here. Because this is what's going to give us some nice gooey, gooey sort of stuffing. So there's our chicken going in there. Doesn't take long. Kids will like this because now that they can actually get in here and get their hands dirty with things. The thing is, is that once you get this set, um, putting your stuffed shells together will be one of the longest parts of this process. Because it's only going to take about 15 minutes at 400 in your air fryer you want a little bit of cooking oil just to coat the outside of it because then this way um, they're going to crisp up and brown a lot nicer and essentially you know once they come out just even make a little glaze for them you can use sour cream you could just dip them into salsa this would be a good you know playoff party kind of backyard appetizer um, could be great for your next Super Bowl party, could be good for your next backyard soiree, kid's birthday party. And like I said, the middles, whatever you stuff them with, hey, the world's your oyster. Again, look at the whole possibility here of doing this with like jackfruit or tofu. The world's your oyster, boo. You do you, moon pie. You do you. So essentially, here we go. We've got this done. I can take this, put this off to the side. And now we're going to take our shells. So here we've got our chicken thighs, we've got our cream cheese, we've got our Tex-Mex style seasoning. You don't want to overstuff them because again, these have to seal up. And if you do not pre-cook these, this becomes a whole lot harder to kind of piece together. But just seal them up, just like this. And you might get a little frustrated because some of these might break on you, but just take a deep breath because eventually they all look nice and pretty, just like that. So this is essentially a stuffed shell now we're going to put into the air fryer. So when I talk about how we have the possibility here for a second dish, this is where barbecue comes into play. So I'm going to clean this up and we're going to get into what is affectionately known as the Texas style shotgun shells as bonus recipe, if you will, because it's pretty much the same thing we just did here little different so it takes a little time but i mean like i said arts and craft project right there you go your stuffed shells put them all in the air fryer just like that give them a little spritz spritz with some cooking oil because again we want that nice crispiness all around 400 degrees about 15 minutes maybe even less just keep an eye on it you'll know when they're done and uh, you're going to get a crunchy delicious little treat when this is all said and done super easy so when I call this like recipes 2.5 versus doing three full recipes here, it's mainly because this is very similar to the stuffed shells. You're just stuffing a bit of a different shell if you're doing the authentic Texas shotgun shells. Doing competitive barbecue, you learn that it's like being on tour with Snoop Dogg and Willie Nelson because you smoke everything. And when I mean smoke everything, I've got a recipe for smoked chocolate chip cookie stuffed Oreos which we can save for another time. The Texas style shotgun shells, uh, this here usually uses like a manicotti or a cannelloni noodle, but we're gonna repurpose some of these little pasta shells that we had because at the end of the day, everything still gets wrapped in bacon. So use what you have. Some of these recipes, when you look them up, will say to use like a sausage stuffing in the middle of this, which if you're gonna go that route, 
you're going to want to make sure that you rest your shells after they're wrapped and everything in the fridge for at least four hours. So some of that moisture draws out of the meat and will actually soften up these shells. Otherwise, they can still be a little crunchy by the time that they get off the smoker. And that's where these are headed. These are going to go onto the smoker with a little bit of hickory, but the can works really well. Use what you have, you know, whether you have an electric smoker, you've got a wood fired one, pellet grill, whatever. This is worth the effort. Set your smoker to about 300 degrees. Give it about 60 minutes. Use your little meat thermometer and check for that internal temperature of 165. So these are actually going to cook a little quicker for us because I'm using a pre-cooked meat. And this is why I like Texas style shotgun shells because they get to repurpose a lot of the leftovers that we have when we do barbecue competitions. I actually pulled a little brisket out of the freezer. So here is what we're going to mix together to make our Texas shotgun shells here. Essentially, you want those noodles that you can stuff. You wanna have a pack of bacon, about a pound of meat, whatever you want, be it the ground meat to do some recipes or the brisket that I'm doing here. Obviously, we're gonna go a little smaller because I'm not cooking for a big amount of people here. Uh, you wanna have some sharp cheddar, about eight ounces, and I've got a little cream cheese that I mixed in there as well. Whatever barbecue sauce you want. Hey, the world's your oyster moon pie, you do you, whether you wanna make your own barbecue sauce or you wanna use something store-bought. Taste is everything with this. You're just gonna use that to lacquer it up as this stuff is being cooked. Obviously, season everything, salt and pepper to taste. That's the nice thing when you're using meat that's already been pre-cooked, really easy to tell if your seasoning's on par. And then you can add vegetables and hide vegetables in here, just like those taco shell things that we just did in the air fryer. So with my cream cheese and my sharp cheddar in here, jalapeno. And if you've got the pickled banana peppers, those work really well because that gives you that little bit of acid. But for today, what we're using is we're going local with the Ugly Barn Farm and their pickled mushrooms. Stop by, see them at the farmer's market. This gives you that little bit of acid in here. Acid, salt, fat, heat, perfect for everything. A little bit of green onion just to keep everything fresh. And then from here, you can mix this up. And then when you've pretty much got that incorporated, because we don't really want to make the meat mushy, that's where you now take your brisket and you just start pulling this apart and basically mixing all this stuff in together. And we are going to get something that's eventually going to go and stuff shells by the time this is all mixed around. Pulled pork, you know, works great for this as well. There's all sorts of options for you. And if you are going to do the sausage route, the one thing that I might suggest is putting everything into like a Ziploc bag because then you can just pipe it in. And by piping it in, it saves you a ton of time and aggravation. If you don't have a piping bag, plus I mean, you can always just throw it out when you're done with it, right? So here we go, we got everything all broken up. We're gonna get this all mixed around here. And we are going to now stuff our pasta shells. So you wanna try and make sure that your cheese to meat ratio is pretty, uh, pretty even around the board. It's just for a better bite and a better texture. Plus, I mean, the cheese, remember, is going to melt a little bit. The cream cheese is just acting as a binder to sort of keep everything together in here. And then with the other veggies, we want to kind of make sure that that's just all mixed around. So when we're ready to go, take whatever you have, stuff that in here. Again, this should be a manicotti or a cannelloni shell, but we're repurposing what we have. Seal it up, take a piece of bacon, and give that a good wrap. And by good wrap, if we got to cut this, we're going to cut this. Well, there you go. Boom. Just like that. Super simple. Super easy. You want it to hold together better? Grab a toothpick. Put it there. Boom. Done. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of time. Kids will get on board with this because, again, you get really dirty. It's like little arts and crafts. Food arts and crafts, anyway. You just stuff your shell. Grab your bacon, wrap your shell, and then get ready for the smoker. Just keep in mind that if you're using the sausage style filling, which a lot of recipes will call for, that this will have to sit in your fridge for the better part of three to four hours before they hit that smoker at 300, internal temperature 165. This will blow away your guests this summer if you're having a barbecue. Trust me on this, tons of flavor, top it with a chimichurri, you're laughing. 
here we are at the stove. We're getting ready to work on some things. First and foremost, the noodles for our firecracker Asian style salad. Again, recipe that Lynn Crawford developed. Fantastic. Kids will go bananas for this. Noodle selection. Incredibly important. Vermicelli. Just like that. Now you'll notice here I've got a pot with oil going. So canola oil. oil We've moved over to the stove, so now let's get into the cooking process of things here. So here is for our first dish with the Asian style noodle salad, whether it's cold or hot, you want to serve it. Vermicelli noodles. Cut them into little haystacks, something manageable. Have your oil ready to go. There's about a half a cup of oil in a very deep pot here, and that's because I don't want this to volcano. Because when you put things in, if it starts bubbling and cracking, it starts to foam up. I don't want this overflowing. I don't want this to become a hazard. You can check your oil temperature, obviously, by using a thermometer, just like this. And uh, you're looking at about 375. If you've got a deep fryer, it'll work as well. But then you got a lot more oil and you risk that overflow. So trust me, deep pot, about a cup of oil, you're good to go. When you think you're ready, you can take a little noodle and just kind of put it in and listen. And you can hear it start to crackle and sizzle and you can see how the end starts cooking a little bit. So we're about ready to go. We've got our tongs and we've got a place to drain this. You can cook these noodles well in advance. They're going to keep for days if you put them into some Tupperware. It's when you add the rest of the ingredients, that's where you're going to get that whole firecracker kind of concept. Uh, Lynn Crawford, this is basically based on her recipe. So Chef Lynn Crawford, I think she knows what she's doing. All right manageable little haystacks with our vermicelli, our rice noodles. This isn't spaghettini, this isn't spaghetti, this isn't an Italian pasta, this is a rice noodle here. And when we're ready to go, boom, throw them in just like that. You can hear them start to work already. You can see how they pop up. And that's what we want. We want them to pop up. It doesn't take long. But again, we talked about the volcano effect, right? So you know what? I think we're good there. Just like that. See how pretty that is? Put that off to the side, and then you can fry your next batch. Doesn't take long, doesn't take a lot of effort. It's just, it can be a little tedious when you're cutting up each and, you know, every one of those individual ingredients that's gonna go into the salad. But it really is a good payoff. Because like this right here, so crispy, so crunchy, delicious salad. So the final part to this salad is the protein. Whatever protein you choose, we're going ground turkey today. I don't need all this because like I said, I'm just making it basically for one right now. But put about half of this in here for now. Maybe a little more. All I have in this pan is a little bit of sesame seed oil right now. You want to make sure that you break this up so we can get that whole Maillard effect. You've heard me talk about that before, where you get that caramelization of the natural like uh, protein strands and the sugars that are in the meat itself. So we want some of those little crispy bits. That's why you want to break this up, basically. Now, the seasoning for this, because this is going to cook pretty quick here, we did all that back at the table with our mortar and pestle. And that's where you control the heat with this as well. So you don't have to worry about blowing some of these taste buds out by going super spicy, unless that's what you like. The nice thing about spice is that you can always add that after the dish is done as well. So you can kind of keep this middle ground for everybody else and then just jack it up to 10 or 12 or 20 or a regret. It happens to all of us, really. Particularly if you like spicy food. I can tell you a Vindaloo story, which we won't get into it. Anyhow, you can see how our turkey's cooking pretty quick here. And uh, just because that I'm just using this once for this, I'm going to repurpose the spoon that I'm already using. Otherwise, don't do that. That's cross-contamination. Smart kitchen working, right? So here we go. This is our lemongrass, our shallots, our ginger. This is all uh, the hot pepper stuff. This is what's going to season our meat, and you'll see that as soon as it goes in here and you start mixing it around, it's going to start taking on a little bit of extra color. 
And I wish you could smell this, because let me tell you, this is so fragrant right now. It smells fantastic. Give you a little seasoning here. Now, instead of just pepper, what I'm using for this, and you don't have to go this route here, but uh, this is called prickly ash. So this is like a very young version of a Szechuan pepper. You can find this, you can order it online. Uh, fantastic, fantastic little kitchen secret weapon, if you will. There we go. And you can see our meat's already starting to take on some color too. And that's what we want. You don't want to overcook it. Again, turkey can be pretty dry. But, boy oh boy, it smells fantastic. So the individual components, once you get cooking, don't take you a whole lot of time, but the payoff once you assemble this is huge for a foodie. Trust me, try this once, you're gonna make it forever. So we can assemble this either cold or hot, but cold works great, and again, these noodles will keep for days. The vermicelli, once it's all puffed up, you get this nice big nest. So that's where we're gonna start in our plate with. And then from here, we're gonna take our meat mixture. And remember, this is just our ground turkey, but you can use whatever you want on here, tofu, jackfruit, beef, chicken, venison, moose, whatever. Go vegan, go vegetarian, whatever. All that seasoning is gonna come from that little spice blend we did up in the, the uh, mortar and pestle. So from here, continue to build kind of a, a salad thing. And this is where it's almost like a little buffet, right? So let's throw on some bean sprouts just because. We're going to throw in some cucumber here because it's pretty. Let's get some broccoli. Happy iron content, right? Get some celery going there. It's going to be a nice crunchy salad. Red onion. Let's throw some peppers in here for good measure. Some of our green onions, our mushrooms, and a Chinese cabbage on the very top. Now you heard that little crunch when I pushed down on it. So that's good. Shows the noodles are still crunchy. We'll take a little cilantro, finish that up on the very top here. You can add some hot peppers to this if you want. Speaking of peppers, throw some peppers. Just around the edges, add some extra color to it. There, super pretty salad, right? And then our dressing. Like four ingredients, that fish sauce, use the tamarind, use the soy if you don't want that. But if you listen carefully now when I pour this, you should actually hear the noodles crack. I can hear it, I don't know if the camera's picking that up very much. But it's because, again, they're this crunchy. So, super simple salad. We'll get into our taste testing to try this out, but look how pretty that is. Good job, Lynn Crawford. That's the reason why you're an Iron Chef, right? Yum. So for the taste test, naturally coming out of the woodwork is the tater tot. And uh, these are, again, when I talk about sometimes kid-friendly stuff, this is pretty kid-friendly. So at the end of the day here, this, these are those air fryer stuffed pasta shells. You finish it off with a little sour cream, got a little tomato salsa on the bottom, good to go. So whatever you wanna put in there, again, you wanna do the taco seasoning, we've got the uh, marinated chicken thighs in this one. This is the assembled 80s firecracker salad. Again, spin on uh, Chef Lynn Crawford and how she puts this together. The most time consuming thing is the pre-prep because I mean, like it doesn't take anything to assemble it. And fresh off the smoker, there you go, your Texas shotgun shells. So normally these things are wrapped in bacon, which you can see, and they have uh, either manicotti or cannelloni shells, but we just use the leftover pasta shells that we had left. So, my official little taste tester, here we go, stuffed shells. She'll give you her honest opinion on what she thinks is, is the better of all of these. So when you bite into these here, you'll get the texture, which is gonna be that little bit of crunchy, 
but your pasta shouldn't be al dente. That's why you kind of pre-cook this. Mm. Nice filling in there. I like these a lot. Good? Mm -hmm. Try jerk chicken in these. Also a winning combination here. So we're one down. What do you want to try next? Do you want to try the salad or do you want to try the shotgun shells? Salad. Salad. So she is quite the little connoisseur when it comes to it. Just spill a little. No. That's okay. Our uh, 115 pounds of German Shepherd Roomba, as you can hear, is cleaning that up nice and fast for us. So here is this Asian-inspired salad. Um, the crispy vermicelli noodles at the bottom are going to give you a ton of texture. We've got that ground turkey with those Asian spices. We've got all those veggies on there. And then we've got that really nice dressing with, you know, the fish sauce, the brown sugar, the lime juice, and then that little bit of chili in there. So let's take this and dig right in. And again, while you can hear the cracking when you put the, the dressing on this thing, Obviously, you can hear the cracking as you start digging in here, particularly with those fresh veggies and those noodles. So that's a pretty good bite there. Mm. Through the whole thing, it's just flavor and texture. I'm a big fan of this. How are we doing as she continues to stuff her face? Is this a winner? Am I making this again for you? Oh, look at that. I even got a nod out of this. So you see, get approved. And last but not least, we have our uh, Texas shotgun shells here. So these have been stuffed with the beef brisket. You can use, like I said, pulled pork. You can use chicken. You can use the sausage mixture. So feel free to grab it. We just take the pasta shell, we stuff it, we wrap it in bacon, and you throw it on the smoker, basically. So, let's take a bite out of this one here. Oh, man. It's been a long time since I made those. Look at that with the brisket and everything inside. And the cheese. How's that? She's enjoying it so much you can barely talk. So, once again, I mean, like, the stuffed shells in the air fryer, or if you go to the smoker, with your Texas shotgun shells. Fantastic little appetizers. And I mean, even for your summer barbecue or your camping trip, this salad transports very well. At the end of the day, tater tot, what do you think? What's your favorite? The air fryer shells. As she's going to the noodles. Good good call. All this other stuff and you, you go to deep fried room selling noodles. The effort was worth it, right? Anyhow, that wraps it up. Um, if there's anything you'd like to see me make in the future or you have any questions, or you want to see something specifically done, by all means, reach out through social media or reach out to the library. They'll get hold of me. In the meantime, I'll have these recipes posted up there. You can follow along with the bouncing ball. But uh, I think this is a winner here for boxed pasta. It's an interesting theme that somebody asked me to do. So let's wrap up boxed pasta and say, everybody, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day.